While Boeing's clown is facing one of the largest setbacks in its spaceflight, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft is soaring ahead with its first commercial spacewalk mission. Specifically, on July, the historic and most anticipated Polaris Dawn is going to happen, marking the great leap in human spaceflight, beyond what we did in NASA's Gemini 11 in 1966. In today's episode of TechMap, we will find out how close SpaceX is to the incredibly exciting launch, the mission's meaning to humanity, and more. In the interview with Ellie in Space, CEO Jared Isaacman, Polaris Dawn's commander and funder, revealed that Polaris Dawn is almost on track to launch on July. This will be SpaceX's 14th crewed flight to space so far and the successor of Inspiration4, the first SpaceX all-civilian mission to orbit in September 2021 can't help but mention that there are some similarities between Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn, such as the funder and commander for both is billionaire Isaac Mann. Polaris also uses SpaceX's Crew Dragon resilience that performed in Inspiration4. However, unlike Inspiration4, which only lasted two days and 23 hours and placed the Dragon capsule into low Earth orbit, Polaris's first of three missions will require much more. During the five-day journey, the crew will attempt the first-ever all-civilian spacewalk outside the ship. They will conduct 40 experiments related to new technologies aboard Crew Dragon, including SpaceX's new extravehicular activity spacesuits and the Starlink Intersatellite Laser Communication System. This aims to help understand the effects of spaceflight and radiation on humans. The destination is no longer LEO, instead, deeper into the cosmos, 870 miles to be exact, than any other since the Gemini 11 took off in 1966. Due to the complications of the mission as well as being the first try, the team faced tons of challenges during their preparation phase. This directly pushed the original launch date as early as late 2022, back several times. This involves several technologies necessary for the mission and also part of the program, including extravehicular activity, EVA spacesuits for private astronauts, inter-satellite laser communication links between the Dragon spacecraft and the Starlink constellation, and some accommodation for the lack of an airlock in the legacy Dragon capsule design. According to I. Sackman tweet last December, the EVA suit that was engineered from the start to be exposed to a vacuum outside the spaceship is much more complicated than an IVA suit that is a last line of defense in the vehicle. Similarly, the vehicle was designed to go to vacuum only in an emergency. Thus, in this mission, it requires changes to software and hardware to adapt to EVA. In addition, they will have to handle the obstacles in laser-based communication over the Starlink constellation. Last but not least, the Van Allen belt that Dragon plans to reach has a huge amount of radiation. The radiation exposure during those orbits over a few days is the equivalent of months on the ISS. Avionics don't like radiation, which means there is a lot to analyze and sim to get right. However, after all, the team has managed to overcome its technical boundary. Everything was almost kicked off in January when SpaceX released a new render of the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission. The render partly showed off the first picture of the future spacesuit. On May 4th, after over two years of development, SpaceX published the very first intro video about their most weighted spacesuit, the SpaceX Extravehicular Activity Suit. Following this, in late May, the media recorded the image of a SpaceX Dragon on the move at KSC, which likely is resilience for the Polaris Dawn mission. The vehicle was likely on its way to one of SpaceX's facilities near LC-39A, or SLC-40, where it will undergo final preparations before launch. In the June 12th interview between Ellie in Space and Jared Isaacman, Polaris's commander also shared the team is running around the clock for the upcoming mission. We've been just in, I mean, near continuous training the last couple months. Uh, so I'm, I'm in Hawthorne now. Uh, we just uh, finished up some suit testing. We'll be here through the weekend. And and in a recent response, he added that the team is getting really close. All major joint sims are complete. They have final suit ATP tests this week in the chamber, then refresher sims right before entering quarantine. It won't be too long after the net date. They will provide updates soon. Although only the most important updates about the mission are unveiled, we can see clearly that the progress is snowballing. Therefore, the team is more confident in the possibility of a July 12th launch date. So how about you? Are you targeting day 12? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe.
Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. It's safe to say that this mission brings many benefits to humanity, not only to scientists but also to sentimental value. As I said, the Polaris Dawn is set to fly deeper into the cosmos than any other since the Gemini 11 took off in 1966. Gemini 11 was the ninth crewed Earth-orbiting spacecraft of NASA's Gemini project. The three-day mission was designed to achieve a first-orbit rendezvous and docking with the Agena target vehicle to accomplish two extravehicular activity EVA tests to perform docking practice, docked configuration maneuvers, tethered operations, parking of the Agena target vehicle, and demonstrate an automatic re-entry. Inspiration 4 and now the Polaris program missions are very small steps in the direction of opening this last great frontier, says Isaac Mann. There is so much we stand to learn, the answers are out there and so much more. We just need to get out there and explore, who knows what we may find. The gathered data will help to build technologies that will get humans closer to Mars and beyond. SpaceX engineer Anna Menon, one of Polaris's crew members, shares that her plans for floating among the stars are going to be, I'm going to read a children's book I wrote, Kisses from Space to both my kids, as well as some of the brave kids at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This aims to raise funds for the Tennessee-based healthcare facility that focuses on childhood cancer and other pediatric diseases. A previous SpaceX flight, the Inspiration4, pulled in more than $250 million, and Menon says they want to add to that we can make huge strides for our collective future, but also address the problems here on Earth today. Floating outside their Dragon capsule in the inky black vastness of space with Menon will be SpaceX engineer Gillis 30. We hope to inspire future generations to dream bigger and reach for the stars, Gillis says. Past astronauts have recounted a curious detail from their trips, insisting that space sometimes smells like gunpowder or burnt food. I'll let you know, Menon says. When we come back, the trip is the culmination of what she calls a childhood dream that started on a fourth grade field trip to Houston's NASA Johnson Space Center. Menon later spent seven years at the famed agency, serving as a biomedical engineer in mission control before heading to SpaceX, where she was tapped to become an astronaut in 2022. I'm incredibly proud, says her husband, Anil, a veteran NASA and SpaceX flight surgeon and astronaut. It's been unbelievable to be by her side watching this journey. Moreover, the successful Polaris Dawn will demonstrate SpaceX's advanced technology and the capability of the private crew. This is likely to catch NASA's eyes especially since Isaacman wants to support NASA in the Space Hubble rescue mission. Although the officials have refused this attractive suggestion due to a lack of belief in the non-government mission, given the mission's success, they might change their minds soon. Who knows, right? It's so amazing to see SpaceX stepping closer to its goal of Mars colonization, then paving the way for multiplanetary life. The upcoming mission will build the solid foundation for that dream. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.